So um, after I graduated from Best Lab, I, I went to Georgia Tech. Um, so at Georgia Tech, I started to develop my own lab, um, Sensor Intelligence Systems Lab. So today I'm going to share with you um, a few research topics we are doing in my lab. Um, so they are all in the area of sensor intelligence systems. So there are uh, three areas uh, I'm working on. Um, one is power management, and the other one information extraction, and also sensor development. So for power management, um, I'm mainly uh, developing, working on developing um, power management algorithm for these envir environmentally powered wire sensors. So the main purpose is to um, achieve sustainable operation of the system, at the same time maximize energy efficiency and improve the quality of service of the overall system. So uh, in this research um, topic, one important aspect is to uh, model system components. So basically, if um, the model can accurately and capture characteristics of the, each component, then we can take advantage of that and develop algorithm to achieve best results. So our strategy for um, power management is to start from uh, component modeling and validation. Then we use the model to um, investigate the potential, um, potential impact of each component on power management. Then based on this investigation, uh, we develop power management algorithms to um, take advantage of the characteristics of each component so at the same time, maximize, uh, maximize the overall efficiency of the system. So one example um, I want to show you is a supercapacitor powered uh, wear sensor. So to support the power management of this system, uh, we develop an accurate and practical supercapacitor model uh, to capture the um, internal energy loss mechanism of supercapacitor, including um, uh, self-discharge and charge distribution. So high self-discharge is well known for supercapacitors, but uh, a few researchers have investigated uh, the charge distribution property of the device. So basically we start to focus on charge distribution first. So based on our investigation, um, if we design task scheduling algorithm to intentionally reduce charge distribution loss, inside our supercapacitor, uh, we can save about uh, 300 joule energy uh, for a sensor node uh, with 10% duty cycle. So this uh, energy saving is from uh, charge distribution alone. So if you also include uh, the um, energy saving from uh, self-discharge, then it will be more significant. So this energy can be used to um, perform more tasks and uh, improve the um, quality of service of the system. So the second aspect of my research is information extraction. So for the information extraction aspect, I'm mainly working on developing automated process to extract information from the data collected by different sensing systems. So the main motivation of this um, area is uh, nowadays um, sensors are everywhere. So you can almost cannot uh, find an environment without uh, a single sensor. But, for, um, but with so many sensors, it's also the data provided by the sensor also overwhelming. So users are more interested in the information provided by these uh, sensors, not the data. So basically, we are trying to uh, develop this automated system just uh, to convert all the data collected by sensor um, into information the users are interested in. So we are working on different applications. Um, one application is uh, um, impact echo data fusion and realization for delamination detection in uh, concrete structures. So uh, if you look at the raw data here, it will be uh, very difficult for a um, general user um, if he doesn't have any um, very advanced technical background to identify 
where is defect, where there's defect. So basically, uh, after going through our automated information extraction process, we can provide a user uh, basically a graphical interface that uh, um, determine, accurately determine the defect location and the size of the defect. So another application we were working on is uh, um, automated information extraction process for bridge deck evaluation uh, using ground penetration radar. So in this application, uh, we develop uh, an interference removal process and uh, adaptive migration process. So basically, this is raw data collected from a bridge deck. So after going through our process, we can provide a much better image and with accurate rebar locations. At the same time, we can provide information about uh, um, relative dielectric permittivity distribution. And this parameter can be used as one indicator of the um, bridge deck condition. Um, another application uh, we are doing is a feature extraction for damage di diagnosis using guided wave. So for this application, uh, our main focus is uh, uh, how to decompose this uh, um, collected sensor signal into different uh, distinct modes, wave modes, so that uh, it's easier for the user to identify the features associated with each mode. Then they can further use information for uh, damage localization and classification. So basically, I'll just uh, quickly touch each topic um, we, we are doing and give you an overview. And the last topic I want to share with you is a remote vital sign detection system. So um, this is a system we are developing um, to remotely detect uh, um, the human respiration rate and uh, um, heartbeat rate. So there are many um, potential applications for this system, uh, such as um, biomedical monitoring, um, healthcare, and also if we can make the um, system very robust, uh, has long detection distance, and it can also be used for uh, emergency and disaster rescue, and as well as the physical monitoring of astronauts or other workers. So here is our developer system, and those are the uh, testing setup. So here is the uh, testing result of our system. So basically, um, this test result when the uh, human subject moves from uh, one meter to 1.5 meter, two meter, and 2.5 meters. So basically, at all this distance, and our system can uh, reliably detect uh, respiration signal. That's the, the, most, uh, um, the most obvious signal, and uh, heartbeat signal. And so if um, the application requires a longer distance, and we can also achieve that. We just need to um, provide, uh, make some modific modification in our uh, design. So we also uh, test our system uh, when the detecting system is facing different uh, orientation, different direction of the human subject, uh, from uh, front, back, and left and right. So that uh, we know we can, doesn't matter um, what's the orientation of the human subject, we can still detect these signals. So as you can see from uh, this um, data, so basically, our system can um, detect uh, both respiration and heartbeat signal when the, um, from all four directions. But when the detecting system is facing back and the right of the human subject, uh, although the respiration signals are very, still very strong, but the heartbeat signals are relatively weak. So basically, that means uh, we have to develop more advanced signal processing um, method to reliably detect the, the heartbeat rate. So this is a general overview of the research um, we are conducting in my lab. Uh, if you're interested in any topic, I'll be glad to have a further discussion with you. Thank you. <laughs>